Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. J and this is the seventh episode of my series How to Complete Hollow Knight. Last time we traveled to the Crystal Peak, a very important area that has shaped the past of the Hollow Nest Kingdom. There we got our next movement ability that will prove immediately useful in the new area we are going to visit today, the Royal Waterways. We will need to activate another tree and get the simple key in order to proceed. Also, since he's on our way anyway, we should pay Relic Seeker Lamb a visit to offload some more items. Personally, I don't do it, but it may be a good idea to clear the area from enemies before activating an essence tree. You more than likely have to kill those enemies anyway, and it may save you some hassle if you don't do it while looking for the orbs. Keep in mind that the orbs may not always be obvious. If there is a corridor connected to the main area, it's more than likely a few orbs are hidden there as well. The simple key will be immediately useful as we need it in order to access the next area. After a certain amount of a particular type of items is sold, Lem will stop giving you any new war info. Okay. 
Now we must use the key in order to drop down to the royal waterways. First, let's start going to the right in the secret area. The Hrump? What kind of name is that anyway? Inflates when hit, but otherwise he does not stack. This is Tuk. He will save you Rancy text which you can give to Gigi who is located beyond the door locked with a simple key on the far right to dirt mount. If you do that, he will summon your shade. This can be useful in case you've died in a hard to reach place, but I've personally never used his services. Now we go left until we reach the crumbling floor where we will use our dive spell. The P-Flip flips when attacked, hence the name I guess, and changes his behavior because of that. But there is really no need to worry about that. Just spam attack him and he's done. Here's the place you should use the spell. You can use the bench and then we're going back to where we broke the floor and back to the left in order to reach Cornifer. Maybe it's just me, but I always thought the idle sounds the bell fighters are kinda similar to that of a grub. So it was kinda throwing me off guard when I got close enough to them. Not sure if it was intended or not. After killing the fluke mom, it splits in two halves. The upper one activates immediately and starts flying. The second one will start attacking after a few seconds as well. The Fluke Fay is similar to the upper half of the Fluke Mon after the split, though quite a bit faster. Another Rancid deck we are not going to use. Now is a good opportunity to talk a bit about the royal waterways. In the past they were basically a sewage system. Because of the flooding caused by the cracks in the blue lake and the lack of any more waste generation from the city, the pipes are now quite clean and have also become the home for various primitive species like the flukes for example. Interestingly only the flukes and the bell foils are infected, which is visible by their aggressive behavior towards the night. All the waste that was washed away by the flood ends up in the junk pits, a very important area in the end game.
Okay, so now we need to kill all the rooms in this room in order to proceed. Finally we've reached him. That sure took a while. Let's go further to the left so we can get another charm and save a damsel in distress. The dash master reduces the cooldown time of your dashes. It is useful if you need to go someplace in a hurry and it will also increase the damage done by sharp shadow and also increases the movement speed bonus from the sprint master charm. Now it's time to save the aforementioned damsel in distress. And thus the knight in shining armor has arrived to sweep the beautiful maiden from her predicaments. After we are done playing the hero in a fairy tale, let's go back to the waterways and grab another mask shard. The maiden we just saved, Bretta, is constantly looking for love. Don't get too comfortable being her current object of affection though, it won't last for long. Next, it's time to save another grub. You're welcome, group number 17. Now we need to go all the way to the right and a bit up in order to face another boss.
keep going towards the taunting voice of your next adversary. And here he is, the Dun Defender. He has several attacks, so it could take a while until you learn how to react to them. The one he uses most commonly and which will exploit the most is the Dunk Toss. He rolls up a bow of Dunk and throws it at you. Before he throws it, approach him and start slashing at him as quickly as possible. Be careful, however, because when he throws it, he also slashes in front of him, so you should back up for a bit just before that happens. Occasionally he will also curl up and start bouncing around the arena. The other attacks you should watch out for are the short dive in the dunk and the long dive. The short one is just a quick dip after which he emerges. In that case just be careful not to be in front of him. The long dive will cause him to move around and eventually emerge while also throwing dunk balls all around the arena. During this attack it's also a good idea to get a few hits in though you also have to learn the timing since the window is quite narrow. After defeating him, you can collect the Defender's Crest Charm. When used, it creates a damaging cloud around the knight. Its use is very situational. Possible combos are the Sporch Room, Fluke Nest and Glowing Room Charms, as it modifies the effects of those charms. Now we can use the pump to open up the path to the next area. Also, just below the switch is a secret area we can reach with the Dive Spell. It contains some statues created by the Dunk Defender, as well as the King's Idol Relic for Lamb. Interestingly, the king's idol is left on the feet of that statue. Could it be a hint? Open up the shortcut to the elevator shaft and then head to the previous room and go to the bottom right. This is a good demonstration on why the Super Dash shines no shining spark. The crystals are a good indicator on where you need to use the super dash. Then keep on going to the right as far as you can.
we are now getting closer to the presumed source for all the assets we've seen so far. Though again, even though what the source is has never been officially confirmed, I'll give you my interpretation when we arrive to it. This marks the path towards our next ability. The Defender being the Dunk Defender we've defeated. It seems like his main purpose was to protect this particular place, which suggests that he is still somewhat sane and has not been infected. So, we need to kill all the sentries in order to proceed. Finally, my obsession with diving in acid will no longer be denied. Let's go quickly free another grub. Grub number 18. And now let's go back to the City of Tears for a bit, through a new shortcut we are going to open. Ok, about the source of the acid. As this place is called Isma's Grove and the ability we've obtained that makes us immune to acid is called Isma's Blessing, it seems logical that Isma is somehow related to the acid. Now Isma, as well as Ogrim, we know him as the Dunk Defender, are two of the great knights of Hallow Nest. My guess is that Isma has lost her life in a way that caused her to continuously release her ability to manipulate acid, thus creating those acid pools. Hey guys, we managed to explore quite a large part of the royal waterways and obtain another important ability. And while we are far from done with it, it's time to go back to the City of Tears for a bit and then head to the Mantis village in order to confront its masters. As always, if you've enjoyed it, please press the like button and if you have any questions or comments, I would love to hear from you. This will really help me to provide better content for you guys. Hope to see you again next time and until then, have a good one.